and welcome to this episode of Bake It Up A Notch Bite Size. This episode is all about getting to know your oven, which is a crucial first step for any home baker. Every oven brand, every type of oven, uh, and depending on even where you live, ovens can be very, very different. And there's also a lot of things about home ovens versus professional ovens that are worth just kind of being aware of. If this sounds like something you'd be interested, please do me a favor and click like and subscribe so you can be made aware of all of our future episodes as they become available. So let's step over to the oven and get baking. The first step in getting to know your oven is to take a look around. What I mean by that is to first look for where the primary heat source comes from. In some ovens, the primary heat source is more towards the bottom of the oven. In others, it's more towards the top and still others have a fan pushing heat from the back. That's a more centralized situation. So all of these are great. It's just helpful to know because if your heat source is at the bottom, you might wanna keep away from that if you're at risk of something that could burn at the base, like something that was coated in sugar or something like that. Similarly, if your heat source is at the top, you may not wanna bake too many trays at a time because the trays at the top are going to brown a lot faster. Next, it's a good idea to look at some of the settings your oven has. One of the most important is convection. I get a lot of questions from you all about convection ovens and whether or not my recipes are written for convection or not. Most of my recipes are written for a standard oven because not everyone has a convection oven. But if you do, convection is great for so many baking projects. Convection just involves a fan which helps to circulate the air and keep the temperature more regulated. But as a result, this does also make the oven hold a more consistent temperature. And typically when you're using convection, you wanna knock the oven temperature down by 25 degrees. So if the recipe says to bake at 350, you'd wanna bake at 325. Next, look at how many oven racks your oven comes with. Some come with three, some only come with two. Typically, I only ever use two racks at a time. So even if an oven comes with a third oven rack, I'm usually taking it out and kind of storing it somewhere else. Now, where you wanna place those oven racks is going to depend largely on what you're baking. So for example, when I'm baking only one item or a single tray, I typically just like to bake right in the center of the oven, not too close to the lower heat source, not too close to the higher heat source. When you're baking two trays at a time, I like to place the oven racks in the upper and lower thirds of the oven. This gives you the best chance of air circulating evenly around both pans. However, when you do this, it is really important to rotate the pans. I like to rotate them about halfway through baking for most even browning. And when I rotate, first I rotate the location on the racks, and then I also rotate the pans front to back. My biggest piece of advice for getting to know your oven is to get an oven thermometer. My favorite brand of oven thermometer is from Taylor and it costs only about $6. It's very, very inexpensive. The reason I like a nice inexpensive one, the Taylor one is very reliable, but it's not really possible to calibrate oven thermometers. So I would prefer to just buy a new one that was inexpensive more frequently rather than investing in a really snazzy one. You're gonna wanna put your oven thermometer towards the center of your oven. Right now I actually have it towards the front because we also think it's interesting to place your oven thermometer in different places and see how it reads. The best way is to let your oven thermometer stay in for a few minutes after the oven has fully preheated. Whenever that signal goes off for you, that's when you're gonna wanna take a look and see what the temperature reads. It's very common for home ovens to fall out of calibration. And a lot of people at home don't know this. If your oven falls out of calibration, it may be off by a significant amount of degrees. I've had people say, my pies aren't baking in the amount of time that you say, only to find out that their oven was off by 50 degrees. If this happens, you can do two different things. The short-term fix is just to adjust your oven temperature accordingly. If you know your oven temperature is running 50 degrees too cold, you can set your oven temperature to a higher temperature to begin with. Alternatively, you can also call the actual company that created your oven. They will send a repairman out to recalibrate your thermometer. While its location may change sometimes, depending on the project I'm doing, I leave my oven thermometer in my oven all the time because it's a really good indicator also if you open your oven a lot during baking, if it's maintaining the actual temperature you set it to. 
An oven thermometer is a really good test of the average ambient temperature in your oven, but it's still a really good idea to check your oven for hot spots. Now, hot spots just kind of happen naturally. Some parts of your oven might heat up a little faster than others. Others might be a little bit naturally closer to the heating element. There are lots of reasons that it can happen. And one of the easiest and cheapest ways to test your oven for hot spots is to go to the grocery store and buy an inexpensive loaf of white bread. Now there's a great article about this on Food52 and exactly how to do it, but essentially you just lay out the bread right on your oven racks. You can also do it on a baking sheet, but I've actually just pulled them out of the oven and put them onto this baking sheet for purposes of showing you what our first rack looked like. Now, it's a good idea to do this with your oven racks in every position you would bake it because the hot spots are going to vary accordingly. You're going to go ahead and put that bread right on the oven rack and just set it at an average temperature to toast. Even 350 is great. Watch your bread as it toasts. You're going to see that some parts are browning faster than others. This is a good indicator of where your hot spots are in your oven. So what does this really mean? Usually what I do once I know where my hot spots are is I just might take care to rotate more frequently so that one portion of my baked good doesn't stay in the hot spot for too long. But remember, with increased rotations, you're also opening the oven door more often. And every time you open the oven door, you're letting a lot of heat out. So it's really important to remember that with increased rotations, it might also increase your bake time. Obviously, I love my regular ovens, but I finally found a countertop oven I'm obsessed with and I want to tell you all about it. In my early days of being a food stylist, I sometimes needed to have multiple things baking at the same time, but I only had one oven. That is when I discovered this beautiful countertop oven from Breville. Now, it works great as an oven. It is a very even bake. You can bake cookies, scones, muffins, all sorts of things in this oven. But what I love it for is actually all of the other settings it has. So one of the settings I love, it has an air fry setting and it comes with an air fry basket. So you can use it to re-crisp fried things. It actually also works great. The air fry setting for re-crisping pat choux that's a day or two old um, and making it fresh and crunchy again. It also has an incredible dehydrate setting. And my husband and I actually love to dehydrate different fruits and, and it was kind of a hobby of ours for a while and we had a separate machine. It was so lovely to be able to just do it anytime something on our counter was starting to spoil a little bit. We could just slice it and toss it in the dehydrator and we'd have a great snack in just a few minutes. But my absolute favorite setting that this appliance has is the proof box setting. So obviously when I worked in professional bakeries and as a bread baker specifically, we had access to a proof box. A proof box allows you to set the temperature so that your dough can rise in kind of the ideal environment. You might also see these sometimes on the Great British Baking Show where they put it underneath their station and then they're watching it rise and all of these things. That's what this little countertop oven can do for you. It can become a proof box. So I actually have some dough in here right now that was proofing. I think the base temperature that it sets it to, if you just set it up, is 85 degrees. But you can change the temperature um, and set it manually to any temperature that you want if you're trying to get a faster rise. I find this especially useful in the winter time when the ambient temperature of my house is much colder and it's just difficult to get dough to rise as a recipe might suggest that it would. But I put it in my proof box and I've got perfect dough in exactly the right amount of time. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Bake It Up and Not, where we all got to know our oven a little bit. I hope that this really helps you with your baking, and if it inspires you to bake something, please use hashtag Bake It Up and Not. We'd love to see it. Come back for our next episode in two weeks, which is all about a spring tradition in my household, making sugar cookies. And until then, happy baking. Silly thumbnail.